everybody wants to be successful, and yet we all have different ideas of what that is. Finding success is the journey we embark upon to go and get what's ours. We are willing to travel down within to find our greatness buried deep inside of us. Questioning society's views and flipping the script, putting our own stamp on life. We're here because our future is within our control. Finding success is how we grab hold of what is possible. The relentless pursuit of success starts here. We're finding success and we're here to help break that monotony of your life help you find your version of success. Welcome to another episode of the Finding Success podcast from me, Alex. And me, Adam. Um, New Year's episode, one last one of 2021. Are you yeah. excited? It's an important one for everyone to listen to, for everyone to get reserved, get right in, to make sure you've got a notepad and pen this one because you're going to need it. Indeed, indeed. So this one's going to be about planning out next year. So we put this out just before the end of this year, so you can, because this is the time of year everybody does this, they review their, themselves and set New Year's resolutions, all those sort of things, don't they? So this is a good time of year to properly, if you want to boss 2022, spend some time, and we've got an equation to tell you exactly how much time you need to spend, planning out your next year. And it's really quite easy, really quite simple, and I really enjoy it, personally. It's I think it's almost like refreshing, isn't it? Because... When it gets to, I don't know about you, but it gets to November and I'm like, I can't wait for the new year to come around because I can't wait to sort of plan out the year, sort of set my goals, work out where I want to be, what I want to do, how I want to go about it. It's just refreshing to get planning. Yeah. I find, I absolutely love it. It sounds really weird, but I love it. I love looking forward, looking forward to the future. I'm the same. That that feeling of fully organised, there's nothing left. You know exactly what you're doing when you're doing it. It's just a really good feeling. So, where do you want to start? So much well, there is so much to go over, but we'll give you a quick statistic before we uh, continue. So, we all like going on holidays, don't we? Indeed. I mean, some more than others. <laughs> Not me, but um, we all like going away on holiday anyway. So, on average, what have you got to do if you go away on a holiday? What have you got to sort of sort out? Unless you go for a booking company, which is completely different. But if you do it by yourself, on your own back. Give a list, Butson, of what we sort of averagely do. Well, you got book flights, you got book your accommodation, where you're staying. Um, also, transfers from hotels to airports. If you're flying, if you're not, if you're driving, you got to look at your routes, all that sort of stuff. You know, hotels, flights, accommodation. That, that sort. Of, I haven't booked a holiday in a long time. Trips, days out. Trip. That's good. That's right. That is right. You've got that trips is. to go out to. You've got, you know, if you want to go on a little boating trip or a safari nice. or... Certain restaurants you want to visit. Dinner, exactly. That's a lot of planning. Day that. trips. Uh, it's not as easy as what everyone thinks it is. So, you know, some people like to just go out there and go free will. Oh, we'll, we'll go and do something that day. But a lot of people like to plan. And roughly, on average, it takes around three to four hours to plan that. Okay. So plan your accommodation, plan your flights and plan your sort of hotel and plan what you're going to do. <laughs> A few days here and there. Nothing, not the whole shebang. So that's a week. Say you're going for a week holiday. A week in hours is 168 hours per week. All right. So you take three to four hours to plan that. As a percentage, that's around 2%. Three to four hours is around 2% of 168 hours. Okay. Right. So we're now going to plan our year, our financial year. We're going to go and plan what we want to do, when we want to do it, how we want to go about it. So we use the same equation because realistically, you plan the holiday, nine times out of 10, you do the stuff that you plan on that holiday. Yeah. So why not do Helps that in a year as well? Smoother. Helps it. You get done what you want to do. Yeah. And you know where you're going to stay because if you don't book that hotel, you're not going to stay anywhere. So you've got to book it. So take that. You plan the year, right? As a rough guide, again, we're going to go for 2% of 365. Gone back some weighty maths out. What is that as, as a daily percentage? Percentage. Of the day, sorry. How many days? So the so percent is two. Off the top of my head, 2% of 360. It's around seven. Yeah, 7.3%. 7.3 7. 7. 7. 7. days or percent? Days. So as a percentage, right, it worked days. out as a percent. But yeah, that okay. turns into around 7.3. So seven days, call it seven days a week to plan out every single day, 365 days in a year on what you're going to do. Doesn't seem like much, does it? It's not, is it? Seven days, one week. For an entire year. 
to plan out what you're going to do on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month, quarterly basis. That's nothing, is it, really? Not really. Seven days. Yes, it's going to be a long seven days, but it's seven days. To sit there and think about the big goal, the big mission, the big task that you want to do. It's not much, is it? Not at all. Not if you really want it. If you really need it. Yeah. So then when you break that down again, so you've got seven days, all right? Now you want to plan out your big goal, your chief aim. You've got seven days realistically to think about chief aim. Well, people in finding success community, people who want to go and be successful in life, they already know what their chief aim is. Their end goal is a result. Yep. But you have to break it down on a year-to-year basis. So we've got a yearly goal. We've got a yearly goal we want to meet. We all have yearly goals. I'm sure we, if you don't, sit down and work it out. It's not that hard. It doesn't take long. It doesn't take seven days to think about it. It takes about 30 minutes, probably less than that. All right, so now you've got your chief aim, your big chosen goal for the year. What would you do after that? <clears throat> so assuming it's just the one goal for now, um, you would look at starting to break it down. So the year breaks down really, really nicely into four big sections. You've got all four quarters. January to March, March to the end, and so on and so forth. It goes down the line. All the way until December. Um, so I would find a way of turning that big goal breaking it down into four sectors and then almost titling each quarter that part of your goal. Yep. Do you follow me? Um, so, and and put them in time order, obviously. So if your goal is to create a certain, I don't know, if it is a business or it is a podcast or you know whatever it may be, <clears throat> do it so, uh, say for example, you want to build trying to think of something what what can you build building company you want to build a building company <laughs> um you're not going to your first quarter goal is not to have customers standing by your front door because you've got no they, where they're going you haven't got a front door yet you need to plan to get the front door first so do That's all right. in time chronolo- chronological order at the same time um but yeah break down into big four four big goals after that so finding your company name yep setting up your company yep you know, maybe getting a bank account, sorting some vans, sorting some workers. That's probably one quarter gone Easy. already. Yeah, don't put, don't spread that over a year. That would take too long. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's already one. That's 90 days already gone. Yep. So you plan your first quarter. Then again, you go to your second quarter. You will be finding clients, looking for clients, uh, marketing your company. That could be another quarter. Very good. Then you go on to the next quarter. It could be, you know, once you've done your work, Building a portfolio of what your work is like and how you've you've done that work, reviews from customers, sharing that, putting that on a website that you've built in previous quarters and so on and so forth Marketing until you reach that end goal yeah. of starting that business, which is the end goal for twenty twenty. Two, three, four. That's very good for off the top of your head. Not gonna say I'm a smart man. <laughs> <laughs> so you've gone from quarterly to quarterly. So well, we've, we've already gone from, gone from annual to quarterly. From, sorry, from yeah. annual yeah, from annual to quarterly, sorry. We're now gonna break down even further. And go to days. Literally. So 90 days and a quarter. So you can then break it down into little bite-sized pieces. Day-on-day tasks that again work out towards our quarterly goal. That again work out towards our annually goal. And with that strategy, it's almost foolproof. Foolproof. You cannot fail. If, you're, if you've set these targets out. Because 90 days, people underestimate what they can People underestimate what they can do in 10 years, but they overestimate what they can do in one year. Yeah. And that's because we get overwhelmed. We, we lose focus with the seasons changing. It's you know, it's winter, it's chill, it's calm. And then summer comes, everyone's like, oh, I need to go on holiday. No, no, no. They lose track of what they were just trying to pursue in the winter. And then it comes around again back to winter. Oh, no, it's no longer summer. I need to get out. You know, They try and enjoy the last days of summer. And it just ruins your year. So if you're doing this, you're breaking it down properly, breaking it down into like the 90-day um, the quarters and then into the daily um, tasks. It's, it's almost impossible for you to fail if you're get, hitting your targets on time. You're getting done what's done as long as it's, it's within your control. You cannot fail. Yeah, it's a foolproof system. So, highly recommend this to anyone that's doing it or anyone that wants to try and pursue some goals or hit some targets. You got to do it. It's just the easiest way to do it. And it, again, it's a great little exercise to do with family, with friends, with yourself. You know, not everyone who listens to this podcast wants to be a business person or 
a sports person or an investor or the best person they could be. They just maybe want to live life, life to life, day to day with their family, enjoying what they do. But you can also do this with family days. You know, you can plan. If you're instance, if you want to go on a big family holiday, yeah, you don't have to take seven days to plan it. As we said, it takes three to four hours. But you can sit down with your family and go, what would you like to do this year? Write down three or four things that each family member wants to do. Kids, grandparents, whatever. And then break it down. It's okay, so if you want to do this, we need to save this much so we can afford to pay for Disneyland Paris. Or if we want to have a new car as a family, we need to do this to do that to, to gain that. So it works on all aspects of life. It's not just a business point of view. It's, it's everything. Definitely. It works across the whole board. Whether you, even if you're a sports person. Your training programs, you, yeah. Yeah, you when the Olympics. Peak, when yeah. Like, yeah, it, it works for anything. It's transferable across every sector, isn't it? Yeah. That's why it was so fantastic. Um, so going from the day-to-day tasks, how would you then go about plotting it? Or I'm trying to get at the calendar, basically. <laughs> how would you go about putting that out there so you can see it anytime? Because that's the most important bit as well. It's For me, it's being able to just to see it. Yeah. If, if I can't see it every day, I'll forget about it. So having a visual reminder every single day or or even a tracking system or something that I can look at at any time, how how would you go about it? So I'm quite the same as you. I like to look at it visually every single day. Now, I don't write on my calendar because I've got a big A0 calendar on the mm. wall. I don't write what I do day to day on that calendar. I will, however, write big quarterly goals on that calendar so I don't really congest it too much but I've got sort of the big end goal but to break it down as we spoke about I put it in my iCalendar calendar because I'm an iPhone fanatic and <laughs> i Apple fanatic I love my, my Mac stuff yeah. so I use iCalendars. calendars um, and again it goes on an hourly basis so I set my task out throughout the day if I'm not working obviously that takes a big chunk of your time up anyway but I then bite size that down so I'll give myself for instance say if um I've got some back testing to do on a pair. I know what time I wake up. I know when I get to my charts. So I plan. So I go, okay, I'm waking up at 4.50. I make coffee. I'm back at the charts at 5.15. I have then 6.15, an hour at the charts, solid. I've done that for the my morning. I'm done. Then I go to work. Then I come home. Then I've got, again, I've planned another hour. So it's all bite-sized chunks in that calendar. And it's all planned out, written day to day. And it's very easy in our calendars. I'm not sure about Google. But you can just copy and paste it or just click how many days you want to do it, how often you want to do it, and what times you want to do it. And just click repeat weekly, monthly, daily, whatever. Yeah. It's very simple. And it doesn't take no time. Grant, we've given ourselves seven days to do this, to plan our year, which is a lot of time. But realistically, if you've got an end goal that you're, you want to work towards, it doesn't take that long to fill out a calendar and populate a calendar. It, only when it comes into those initial extra tasks that you want to do, that's when it sort of comes into play, but not massively. You could almost spend the first six days planning your year and that last day just plotting it into the your iCalendar, your Google Calendar. Yeah. I use Google Calendar myself. Um, and it's great because of the notifications you get. It can bing on your phone, can't it? Yeah. It can literally like give you that nudge. You might be distracted with friends, with family. Bing, it'll come up and it'll distract you. Um, or refocus you. Yes. And get you on to target. So you, again, it's just another little aid that stops you failing. Um Sorry, before you carry on, cool. I also like to set, like, um, you can use travel reminders, can't you? So, for instance, say if you've got an event, you, it says 15 minutes to travel to, so you can put a 15-minute alert on the iCalendar before you actually start that task. So, again, I like to do that. I like to say, if I'm going, I don't know, to an event, which is rare or sometimes common depending on COVID, I then put, like, a two-hour time slot. But if it's like a, I need to do this at this time, start time at 5.15, I'll set an alarm, a, like a timer, to tell me at five o'clock. So it always comes to my head. I've got 15 minutes to make a coffee, get to my desk, get everything planned out, laid out, and then I can start work at 5.15. So I kind of, this again, is a great little tool for, to that's, use that. That's a wicked little tip. I yeah. should do that, really, because I don't do that. I really like that. Travel it's great because you, you, you're just, ready. Yeah, preparation time. Yeah. So you don't actually lose that hour, say if you're just doing an hour. You're working from the beginning all the way to the end. That's really good. I like that. Um. But also going back to the big calendar, so we've got the micro light planning down in the in your phone, pinging away at you all day. I want to go to like the macro planning again. So going back to that A zero calendar, of which we will put a link in the description. Get on Amazon. There's no no money whatsoever, is it? And it's awesome to have that visual light 
aid. You get a load of stickers with it as well. So I col I colour coordinate my events or different sectors of my life. So you've got the nine to five work that I, I put in like red, um, this FS stuff in blue, you know, all different colours for different different uh, things that we're doing. Um, so you can, again, it's just this huge visual. Um, for us in our industry, we know when we're going to be out of the country, when we're not going to be out of the country. That all goes up there all right at the beginning of the year. So I can see exactly where I've got time, where I've not got time, where I've got free weekends, where I've not. And in doing this as well with your business partners, with your friends, your family, you can sort of find weekends when you're free. So this is how we'll plan the podcast, so when we'll find time to go and record because we can look at each other's calendars and be like, yeah, this day is definitely free, this day is definitely free. And you mark it off and you secure it and that's locked in as a as a day you're busy again now. And just it's like foolproof. But as you said earlier, not having to write every single little detail in um, into the little boxes because they're big boxes, but you can't write daily tasks in there. Yeah, you can't do your hourly sort of hourly exactly. sections can you but for like weekly i have a little i think it's colin's book it's just again off amazon we'll put a link in the description it's a week by i think it's called a week by page or something um calendar and um in there i'll have a bit more of a detail about roughly what's going on so if it is about the podcast i'll have like what podcast episode is or where it's going to be who it's going to be with etc and that again just so every monday or every sunday night it um throughout the year i grab a cup of tea in the morning i can have it or in, in the evening sorry and have a good look at the calendar just before i go to bed and i can see the entire week ahead you see all the big things that are coming up and then in me collins book like a little bit more detail if i've forgotten what this particular color dot was about you know yeah and it just works perfectly because there's no week that i don't i feel lost or confused or anything like that i'm focused and just able to crack on there's no surprises basically and then as soon as you do get uh, like a, you get a text from your parents, you want to come around for a barbecue, you know, or, or your friends, you want to go on holiday here. You slap it in the calendar, it's there, it's done, you locked it in, and you could, you're just going to know if you're free or not. Yeah, there's none of this um and ah in. Um, I don't know about you, but I also put my financial, big financial bills on there. Yeah, stuff like car insurance, car tax, uh, my Amazon <laughs> subscription, all those sort of things, all up there in green, obviously because money's green in America. I put all that sort of stuff up there as well. So you can see it, you know when it's going to come out, you know that if you've saved enough or got your, enough money in your float or exactly. so on and so forth. Exactly that. Beginning of the month, you have a look. It's like 30th of the month before. You should have a look through the next month. Oh, I'm going to accelerate my savings 10% this month. Awesome. Oh, I'm going to need to pay my car insurance. That sucks, but I've got the money. I'm ready for it. Yeah. It just, everything is so much easier because there's no surprises. Yeah. And again, it reassures your animal brain. You don't have to worry about or panic about if you've got enough money. You've already planned it out. It's already there. You know what your vocation, how much you've got to spend is. So it's there, it's done. Exactly. There's less panicking and more in about what's important in your life. Exactly. And yeah, spawn. And it's also, again, it's quite funny. With this planning um, the year out as well, you could also do it if you have a family, family days and girlfriend, boyfriend time as well. A lot of people, because... If you're a partner in a supportive relationship and, you know, you're busy, sometimes it's nice to know that you've got some time for your partner in what you're doing and when you're doing it and, and how on how long for, basically. Because a lot of people and a lot of couples just go spontaneous, let's go out for a coffee or let's go and watch a movie or so on and so forth. So if you have kids, you can also plan time to spend that time with your kids. So you can, again, work it around your life and work it around your business vocation and, and so on and so forth. So... Again, uh, we know someone that does it on a day-to-day -day basis. They have a big, big whiteboard on their wall. They've got little red light ticks and they'll plan out an hourly thing. This is what we're going to do. We're going to go out for a date night or we're going to go out for a family day. Just on there so that he can work out what he's doing or when she's doing it, for how long for, so that they can have a meeting and plan out the rest of their life around their family as well as their business. Another great idea for families to do. Fantastic well. idea for families because it does work. I know growing up, my old my old man, constant, so he, this works mainly for people working at home or at home a lot but still busy working because say if you sat in your office all day your family's going to start to think oh he's just he's just busy working he's not he's not focusing yeah. on us you know whereas if you're at the office you know down the road you you'd come home and that's it you're at home you 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 can chill with family but if you're working from home you sort of don't switch off quite as easily and your your family will start to think oh he's not he's not paying any attention to us he's not giving us attention um and that can upset families so Exactly like I said, use the whiteboard. It 
just clears everything up. Like everyone knows when you're free to have some personal time or when you're working time. Yeah. And it just it saves so many arguments. It, it would have worked quite well in my house growing up, to be fair. Because again, the old man would be in his office for hours and hours and hours. Like, I think I, if I remember my dad, it's him just in the office. Like, it's just, that's where he was all the time. And um, I guarantee if I drive home now, he'd be in the office when I arrive at the house. It's just where he is. But that whiteboard thing would stop you going, oh, am I interrupting some important work? Am I not? You know, it's just, yeah, it's fantastic. He could be chilling in his office watching TV or something. But, you know, he's just, is it because in his office, it's like, oh, exactly. do you really want to interrupt? It's quite weird, isn't it? How life has changed. Because as a, like a, an industrial age, say dad or mum were going out to work to earn money. Oh, there must be hard grafters. You know, they're doing a lot of hours mm-hmm. out, away and at work. But as soon as you come into the sort of starting a business from home or you don't really, it's not really perceived the same, is it? It's they're not. at home. You know, they're not really, dad's not hard worker because he's working from home. So it's really weird and how times have changed. Now with COVID, obviously, everyone's moving homebound. And it's it's still, I think it's still quite a weird thing for people to understand that even though you're working from home, you are still working. It's not like a, you're not trying hard because you, you're out for long hours. It's still the same thing. Still doing the same work. She's not, you're just saving yourself the commute. Yeah. Yeah. No, it must be hard. Uh, that's interesting. It'd be interesting to see if any listeners have had that, if they've had to work from home recently, have they noticed a different dynamic in the Vibes family, with the know? family, yeah. yeah. It'd be really interesting. That's cool. So I use, again, I use our calendars. You use, do you use Google? Google Calendar, yeah. yeah. Much different with Google? Uh, I don't know. I've never used our calendar, but it's, you can plot it out hourly, uh, different color codes for different events. It's it's exactly how you described the eye calendar. So I, I say it's exactly the same. And again, going even further into it from a previous few episodes, accountability comes into it as well. Your meetings, as we said, you know, you set your weekly daily tasks and having an accountability partner will also help you keep stuck, keep focused on those weekly tasks as well. And as you go along, you can tick them off, make sure you've you seen that nice big tick next to that task that's done for the day. And it just gives you another feeling of self-accomplishment. You've done it. You've achieved something today that you've wanted to achieve, that you've worked towards. And again, you've taken another little step to work towards your end goal. So it's very important to celebrate your day-to-day tasks as well. And having an accountability sheet is another great way to do that as well. As we've said, we've got it. So if you want to get hold of it, message us and we can send it over to you guys. But it's just another little additional help for everyone day to day, week to week. Spot on, yeah. That's that will. If you are sort of lagging, if you go away on holiday or something, that'll just refocus you. Because it's important. We how many times do we lose focus this year? It's unbelievable. Being away and and or just something happening, and you just you know like, I don't really know what I'm doing this week. It's like no, come on. It's taking that FaceTime, that accountability session between us to go. This is what you need to do. Come on, yeah. get in the zone, get cracking, and it's it's saved. Well, it's, it's kept this thing going, hasn't it? Kept this podcast going. Yeah. <laughs> and it will do for another year and years to come. Exactly. So just recap real quick. Things are going to need and how to play it. So you're going to need an A0 calendar that's available on the description down below. You're going to need... I, I like a little Phillips. It's a Collins week by Dinger calendar. Have you got another little calendar or you just have the big one and then your eye? eye? Yeah, so I use my whiteboard. If I've got like a week to week basis, I'll 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 little I'll put like a little column for my weekly sort of stuff that's coming up. And but I have the big one, the whiteboard and the eye the eye calendars for me. So get you something like that. Get you some visual that you can see every single day. You can go to every day single day. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um so you're never lost, never confused. Get yourself an accountability partner. Really, really helpful. Most powerful tool you can get and most of the time they're free because you're just trying to help each other out. You're both getting Benefit. You both will reap the rewards of, of having an accountability partner. Um, and yeah, spend the seven days just before Christmas. This is why we're releasing it now on the 26th because we wanted you guys to get cracking with it, get planned before the New Year's, have a good New Year's Eve still, get ruined, and then boom, look at your calendar because you've planned it all out, you know exactly what you're doing for the rest of the week, Yeah, the rest of the year. It's very important that you know a lot of people go into the New Year, set their New Year's, New Year's resolutions and I'm going to lose 30 stone or whatever. 30 stone's a bit dramatic, I know. I went, I went, I went. But... <laughs> All I'm saying is, once you've set those goals, as we said, New Year's resolutions come around to it and everyone finishes within three weeks. Mm. But with planning out your year, you're setting yourself up to not fail, to get those resolutions, get those goals, get them set, get them done, get them written down. Seven days, it's nothing. In the grand scheme of 365, it's nothing. 
So just spend the time and get it done. Best way to find success. So, guys, thanks for listening to the final episode of the year. We hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget, follow us on Instagram. At underscore finding success underscore. Twitter. At finding success. YouTube. You finding success. (laughs) All the links will be in the description box down below as well. Um, Please go and like, follow us, comment, any questions, email us. We'll we'll be sure to answer them. Um, But for now, we wish you Happy New Year. We wish you all the best for your Christmas and we will see you soon.